call me what you want, open invitation. I'm a human being infused with creative vibration. Utilizing melodies and visual stimulation. Beats and stories get the glory, you get the relation. I get impatient like a doctor racing. Bullets coming from my soul, my body just a casing. Welcome everybody to the very first episode of the Paralyzed Artist Podcast. My name is Daniel Bryan Alvarez. And I'll be your host. And let's get right into it. I'll start uh, with a little bit about myself. I'm about to be 35. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. I moved out to the state of Washington uh, to, on two separate occasions. But for the most part, I was born and, and raised here in L.A. I have six siblings, all uh, women. Um, and that will be my sisters, Annette, Susie, Jenny, Myra, Cindy, and Wendy. And at one point, I also had a stepsister because my parents uh, split up and my dad got married. And so I had like a stepsister for a while. So I kind of like throw her into my sibling pile, I guess you could say. And uh, my parents are both from Mexico. They both immigrated at a pretty young age. So I'm bilingual. I speak Spanish and English. But it's funny, like if I start if I start talking Spanish right now, I'll, I'll sound all weird because like, well, for one, I haven't really been speaking Spanish lately. And then it's like, it's kind of like putting me on the spot. So like, empiezo a hablar español y, y no encuentro mi acento. Pero sí, sí puedo hablar español. Crecí uh, hablando español con mis primos y mis hermanas. Lo chistoso es de que con mis papás hablábamos más inglés que, que español. Pero sí, fui aprendiendo así. So sí, soy bilingüe. If y'all need the introduction, too bad. <laughs> nah, I was just saying that I, obviously, I was just explaining that I'm bilingual. And was born in the hood. Ghetto child. I was raised all around L.A. Like, I moved a lot. Uh, like, a lot, a lot. Like, 25 times, maybe, if not more. Um, so, yeah, my parents were together for a while. And then they split up. And me and all my siblings ended up going with my mom. It's crazy. We lived in Compton when my parents split up. And, like, this, like little get well it was kind of ghetto um but it was great craziness it was craziness um yeah it was in 1992 like that's when the la riots like the rodney king beating and the la riots happened and it was going crazy people was going crazy doing wildness it was like wild people were like looting stores and taking like everything you had like people running with like diapers and milk and all kinds of other random stuff. And um, <clears throat> yeah, my dad like didn't let us go outside. And people would be like, you you guys aren't going to go outside? And we'd be like, okay. Wildness. Wildness. Parents split up. And we moved to Pasadena with my mom. With my mom's sister, my Aunt Rosa. And her kids. She has three kids. And we was wildin'. Yeah, I grew up like fighting with with like my cousins and my siblings. We were we were wild. We there was a lot of times that we were alone, and we, so we were like basically taking care of our of ourselves sometimes. So we would get into some wildness with my with with my siblings. I have so many stories that you know we'll get into as we go through this podcast. Um, I'm an artist. I'm a painter, photographer. I definitely need to get into like doing a lot more video work. This being a part of it, trying the whole, trying out the podcast thing because, um, yeah, I I think it's funny. I've been trying to make videos for like the last few years, and I've always let one thing or another come in between that. So, like, I made the decision that I was gonna just I'm gonna just do it. Like, I'm not prepared at all. I, I don't, you know, I have no experience with like, podcasting. I, I, I've i made, like, 20 videos, 25 videos. Um, well, actually, I've made, I've worked on more than that because at one point I was working with a nonprofit and helping them make videos. So I've made, so I've made, like, 20 of my own videos on and off for, like, the past, like, 
10 years or something like that just not being consistent at all and you know I'm at a point in my life right now where like I really need to things to change because like for the most part I've made every bad decision you can make pretty much like I, I've failed at almost almost everything I, I've, I have no successes under my belt aside from like graduating from a photography course that's like one of my only accomplishments um so i'm like midlife cry midlife crisis seeing something crisis i mean I, it it kind of might literally be because i pro i'm probably not going to make it to 70 75 so i might just be going through a midlife crisis right now um just been been feeling really down about you know a lot of the decisions that i've made in the past and i need to get my shit together get my shit together and yeah here we are i guess you could say i like um i'm a little bit of a comedian i've i've been known to make a few people laugh here and there especially if i'm comfortable but like i'm the i'm the the type of person that i was a quiet kid like i got bullied in school because i was always small so i never really had confidence uh, my parents aren't the type of parents that were like i love you give me some give me some hugs like they were just like you know distant just because they didn't really have their parents a, a whole lot around so yeah it, it's kind of like one generation passing down like or not passing down certain things just because the things weren't there like the the lessons weren't there um and yeah that's something i understand now but as a kid you're like you know you, you, when you deal with certain situations and you don't understand it kind of like you internalize it and especially me i was the type of person that always kept everything in and never talked about anything i just kind of like I, st I think I started, like, protecting myself and kind of, like, blocking out emotions just because, like, almost kind of, like, I'm not going to let people disappoint me. And it kind of, like, backfired because it ended up being where, like, I now I have, like, no empathy and kind of, like, it, it's really hard for me to show emotions and, and you know, let myself be emotional. And th that's a, a part of the journey with the podcast is to kind of just like put myself out there and kind of like, you know, maybe grow as a person. I'm going to be bringing in guests, um, you know, whether it be artists or models or because um, I, you know, I like, I know a lot of people in the art community here in Los Angeles. So I'm definitely going to be bringing in other uh, artists and kind of like pick their brains and find out what makes them so good and, and like, how they got into doing what they do like I, i've always been interested in like figuring out how people you know do things and how they kind of like how their brain works almost i'm into like those i'm I'm those people that are into like serial killer shows like i want to know everything like murder mysteries i'm like i need to know it I'm rambling, I'm rambling, because I don't got a plan, because I'm new to podcasting, and hopefully it works out, yeah, I, I, what, was, what was that all about, might have to cut, might have to cut that out, but, yeah, so let's get back into the life, so I, you know, went through a bunch of random, like, crazy stuff as a kid, so, I, I didn't exactly have the most stable childhood. Um, and now I'm traumatized. <laughs> I mean, well, I am sitting here in a wheelchair because I got shot. Um, so, yeah, you could say I've been through some stuff. I've been through some stuff. So I, I'll get I'll get there. I'll get there. See where I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, getting uh cotton mouth and dry mouth i guess because i'm a little nervous because i'm not used to this stuff so let me just take a quick drink 
this podcast is gonna be everywhere. Life. So when I moved with my with my mom, I had uh, like I was uh, like I said earlier, I have nothing but sisters. So I always felt out of place. I always felt like left out. Like if we were gonna go somewhere, I, I they they tell me like ten minutes before we're gonna leave. Like oh we're gonna go here, and I'll be like, you know, getting dressed all slow. Like wait for me, guys. So like I for whatever reason I always felt out of place. I. I and because we moved, I, I moved a lot. I guess I never was able to, like, form relationships correctly. So, I'm a little everywhere. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't even make sense. What are you saying? Get it together, buddy. I get nervous. I get nervous, and I start rambling. Hopefully, I get better at this whole talking to the camera thing, because then I start overthinking, and I start talking fast, and I start mumbling, and then... It goes crazy. See, we're, we're, we're just rambling. Rambling, not gambling. You can't gamble because Rona got the casinos shut down. I know because my dad just came back from uh, Las Vegas to do nothing, to stay in his hotel room, basically, because everything was can't do nothing. Anyways, rambling, not gambling. See, I'm, I'm, I'm just going through. Like, anyways, so I'm living with my mom, feeling out of place. Luckily, I had my cousin. Um, I grew up from time to time with my cousin, Peter. So he was kind of like my little brother. So we got to fighting all the time. Bam, bam, bam. That was a, that was some fun times, fun memories of getting ass whoopings. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we were wild, man. We would, like, fight till someone was bleeding. We'd fight till... My mom would have to get a broom and whip our asses to separate us. Whack, whack, whack. Get the hell. Shoot. Like, like we were like fucking dogs or something. Like, sit, mother. Sit. <laughs> no cat. No cat. No Dude, I think that's the first time I ever used that word. Um, I'm turning into a social media. <clears throat> so, yeah, I grew up wildness, like scars my head is full of scars from from all the wild times but but I always felt out of place and it was funny whenever I, whenever I would get in trouble I'd tell my mom one day my dad's going to come and I'm going to leave and, and and I'm just going to leave and one day my dad just randomly showed up and he was like whoever wants to go with me let's do and I was like let go so I was gone it's funny, I actually had a bike that I had kind of like, I bought, well, my mom bought it for me, and then um, I kind of like worked on it, because the person I bought it from was one of my friend's dads, he would get, um, he would find like junked bikes, fix them up, and then resell them, and I would like go, you know, chill out with him, and kind of like learn to do, you know, what he was doing so I, I would like work on my little bike but I had to leave it because my dad had like a little small car that it didn't fit in so I think I was more sad about leaving my bike than actually like leaving um you know moving out um but I was a kid so you know looking back um I've questioned some of the like some decisions that I've made um and we'll get more into that and other episodes of Le Podcast. But for now, let's continue with this story. It's crazy. I used to work too when I used to live with my mom. Our neighbor he used to uh, have like not a paper route, but we'd go to the actual like paper factory. And what we we do is like we would have to bundle the big bundles of newspaper to pass them out so that other people could distribute them. I was uh, sitting there like nine, ten years old, like from like. 7 p.m. to like, you know, 3, 4 in the morning, just hustling. I, I don't even remember getting paid, man. But, yeah. Anyway, so I moved with my dad, and then um, I was a small kid, so I kind of got bullied. And then when I moved with my dad, uh, he had a girlfriend, and then we kind of almost immediately moved with her. And then they were, like, into going to church. So I went from never going to church to being in church like three times a week my they like they got really into it and i was just like man 
what have I got myself into? But, um, I mean, I kind of uh, adjusted and I like those. I started making friends and it got a little better, but it was like, man. So I would go to school and like kind of get bullied and I'd be like, I don't want to get in trouble with my, you know, church and my parents. So I would kind of just like let people bully me, um, you know, through a few grades, through like maybe like, um, I don't know, like f- fourth grade through like maybe like seventh grade. That's when I was just like started getting it together. I was like, is it the next motherfucker? You know, I, I like the next one is going to get it. And then kind of like things change after that. And I started discovering I could whoop some ass. Be- I guess from, from from the fighting with my cousins and like our f- friends and stuff. Like, I guess I I, I could scrap a little. Um, and I was pretty athletic. So, um, but yeah, like one day I was just like, that's it. The next one is going to get it. And the next one got it. So, um. Moving, I'm living with my dad, and then he he got a job offer to move to the state of Washington to make, you know, substantially more money than he was making. So we end up moving to the state of Washington. If you guys don't know where that is, that is two states north from California. And if you want to talk about culture shock, culture shock, culture shock, it was like a oh, white people, and then beaner Mexicans. It was like I went from many from Los Angeles, many Mexico to Caucasians, Caucasians everywhere. And I was used to La Raza and talking Spanish. Que onda, compa? Orale, vato. No seas wet. You know, like I was used to that. And then I, we, I went from that to nothing, to no, 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 no Mexican here. Like if you wanted some tacos or something, you got to drive like far and here there's like a taco stand every damn corner man i was like damn what have we done man and i was kind of like going through puberty i started going through puberty at that time and a mexican got depressed like just i guess from all the past experience up to that point dealing with like abusive my mom some of my mom's like abusive boyfriends and getting my ass whooped too for my parents when I did something wrong you know you're even if you do something wrong I, I guess like any type of like violence still registers in your brain like you're getting your ass whooped what's going on protect yourself protect yourself I know that now I didn't know that back then but a good ass whooping is good sometimes I, I will say that but Violence is not always the answer, but sometimes you got to whoop that ass. You got to <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, sorry. Got a little out of hand there. Got a little excited about whooping some ass. Yeah, that's one of the things I miss. Like, I was into, like, f- fighting, like, boxing. I kind of got into, like, fighting and boxing as, like, a sport, and I kind of missed that. I might have to start wheelchair boxing. I've seen it happen. Anyways, getting back to the story. So I move up to Washington, and then we're up there. At at that at this point, um, first w- when my dad came, I left first, and then my older sister ended up coming to move with us. So her, and then my stepsister, my and then my because da- my dad had gotten married. Jeez, I'm leaving. I'm leaving stuff out. So yeah, my uh, we were living up there. And I'm going to school, and I had started working at this restaurant called Taco del Mar. It's like a burrito. It was like a burrito, kind of like fast foodish slash restaurant, making some burritos. So I was making some money, making some money. I'm um, going to school, and then um, my older sister just randomly one day, uh, she was like, "I'm." I'm gone and she ended up just getting her boyfriend at the time to drive her back down to California and I was like damn she done dip um and then after like I was up there for a year kind of working trying to figure things out and then my cousin Lisa had a, a quinceanera that's kind of like a 
a coming to age celebration in the Mexican or Latin community. I don't know if it's just a Mexico thing or it's like a Latin America thing or certain. I don't know exactly, but it's like a, a ceremony. Like you're not a kid anymore. You're a lady. And I guess my cousin took it literally because she had a kid like right after that. <laughs> but Yeah. Getting back to the story. So I, I come, I come and I come out here quinceanera and, um, I meet I like one of the girls that was I, that was coming out in the kitchen and I was like it's kind of we kind of started dating and then this little idea started bubbling into my head or I don't know if it was already there when I had already come I was there for like supposed to stay for two weeks and then go back up because I had to work and go to school but I I, I was just like I'm gonna stay I'm gonna stay it was kind of like that <laughs> like that Wolf of Wall Street uh, when he's like I'm gonna leave it. I'm not going. I had that moment at like 16 years old. Like, I'm not going back. I'm going to stay. And I ended up staying um, with my aunt. Um, my tia Rosa that I, again, grew up with, took me in with, with her kids and my sister. And she hustled and, and, you know, did what she could and fed us and sometimes went without eating to, to hook us up. Um, so I kind of lived with her for like maybe like ha almost a year. And I actually was playing basketball like most of that year. Like if I was there, there was a park. I was living in Huntington Park at the time. That's where my aunt lived. And there was a park called Salt Lake Park that was like a few blocks from there. And I was there almost every day of the week playing some ball, not going to school because I needed my transcript. So I didn't go to school for almost a, a full year. And then my dad was like, man, well, you know, the kids is down there. And, you know, like, L.A. has always been wild. Like, it has this crazy, you know, crazy, you know, the cholo culture. And it's been crazy. It's been wild. You know, growing up here is, is, is fun. But it's wild. It's wild. So... I ended up staying, and then my dad ended up moving down, and, and we ended up kind of, like, moving back with him, started going to school. Well, once he came down, I got the transcripts, and I started going to school. I was going to HP High School in Huntington Park, and then my dad ended up coming down and moving down, and he lived kind of, like, in the same area where I stay now, kind of, like, West L.A. area, and I moved with him, and I was going to HP and taking two buses and a train, had to wake up super early, and I just kind of wasn't learning, like, I was just going there for, like, girls and, you know, sports and friends, but I, like, I wasn't learning, so eventually I, I was just like, I don't want to do this, and I just stopped, I don't stop, that was one of, like, the worst decisions that I, that I probably made is, like, stop going to school, and then I kind of just did nothing for like a year. It was just like did my thing with my girlfriend and wasted time making bad decisions after bad decisions. And so I kind of did nothing for a year. It was just literally doing nothing, not working, not going to school. I turned 18 and kind of like the opportunity came to move up back go back up to Washington to work for the same uh you know restaurant that I that I was working for that now that I'm looking back like why would I go back I think I knew that I needed to change something um and I was like I'm gone as soon as I turn 18 I'm out took a bus up to Washington by myself and uh started working got I ended up staying with my my dad's wife's uh, brother and they had a little apartment and then I moved with them and then we ended up getting a two bedroom apartment and I basically just went up there to work I was like work 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 I was at, like I it was full time first during the day and then I, it got to one point I was just like working the whole day like morning shift at one restaurant and then night shift at another restaurant 
hustling, making burritos all day long. It was crazy. It got to the point where I would be doing that so much that even if I would be dreaming about making burritos, I'll be like making the whole burrito. And I would wake up and get super mad. Like, what the hell? Let me sleep, burrito. Let me sleep. Let me sleep, goddamn burritos. <laughs> we, we was wildin'. We was wildin'. See, I did that. And then I met a girl. And it was serious. It was serious. It was serious. I'll kind of like get more into that story. But yeah, I ended up meeting a girl. And then I was like, I need a better job. What kind of job can I get? But I can make some money and use my skills that I didn't have or I thought that I had that I didn't have, which were talking to people skills because I'm still not good at talking to people. I get all nervous and shaky and I can't look people in the eye because I never made those communication skills from movies so much. Chicago. So I got I ended up getting a job at as a car salesman selling cars at Harris Ford, the, you know, biggest selling the biggest grossing Ford dealership in the Northwest. And it was I had a one of the only advantages that I had was that I could speak Spanish. So, you know, like all the Spanish speaking customers would see my my very Latin looking self. And be like, uh huh, huh. We got the hook up. Holla if you hear me. So yeah, they will come to me like, what's up, Paisa? Give us up, Paisa. And I'll be like, what's up, Paisa? I, I got the hook up. Yeah, I got I, I got it. I got in trouble uh, a few times because uh, you know, customers will like go to me and then like another salesman will be working with them and then um, you know, they'll see me and be like, I wanna go with the raza. Orale vato. And they will come to me and then, yeah, they'll be like, what the hell? You stole my person. And I was like, I didn't steal nothing. They came to me. Piotch. Yeah, I wasn't that good at it. Um, the only advantage is because of Spanish speaking. So I'll, I'll get some deals here and there. Um, but yeah, I wasn't good at talking to people. I, I've never been good at approaching people. I've never been good at like, you know, small talk. None of that. Not good at all. So I don't know why I thought. A sales job would be a good idea. It's stupid. Very stupid. Anyway, so I like, I didn't tell you. So I, I had met this girl, right? And it got serious very quickly. And I liked her a lot. So it got very, very, like, engagement serious. It was very serious. Yeah, we'll get into that story in another episode of how... I got her engaged at like 19. Damn. She tried to get me. She tried to get me. Um, but yeah, so I'm selling these cars, right? Or not selling these cars. And then I was like, I need I need to see my family. So we kind of take a little vacation, come down to come back down to California and have like a week. Of just like a blast, like seeing all my family, my sister, my cousin, just chilling, having a grand time. I was like, yeah. So we come down for a week, have like a blast. We ended up, we rented a car and kind of like just did all the fun stuff you do when you haven't been in California. When you're from California and you've been gone for over a year. I did it. We did it. Saw the family, you know. So I go back and we're up there. I'm kind of like, man, back to this job that I'm very bad at. Dang. So doing that. And um, my sister, my younger sister that's right after me, Susie, calls me crying. Like crying. I was like, "What what the hell? And my cousin Peter had tried to commit suicide. He had shot himself um you know multiple times in the head um and i was like damn it was just like immediate sadness like crying like 
one of the few, like, that's one of the few times that I cried uh, aside from, like, being a kid and being in trouble and doing some dumb shit, you know. But I was like, damn, that was like my little brother. I was like, oh. And, I, like, the decision was, like, Im- immediately, like, I need to move back to California. Like, I need to be there because if he, he if he passes, you know, I, I he needs to know that I was here, you know. They're like, damn. So I just, like, got all my stuff. And then I ended up just coming. It was going to be, it was supposed to be for a few months. Like, okay, just come down. You know, if he survives, hopefully, like, we didn't have all the details right away. I I just, she just told me and I was like, bam. So I drove back down to California. I came, he ended up surviving, um, which is crazy. I was supposed to stay for about two months and then go back, but I ended up crashing my car and I didn't really have money. So I ended up having to stay. And then that caused a big argument with the girl that I was with and we basically just ended up like calling everything off it was just kind of like all right like there was issues because I was uh, unhappy up there because I was homesick and stuff and that was an issue so it, it blew up and I ended up just staying down here and just kind of like yeah so I, I live with my aunt for a little bit my other aunt my mom's other sister Olivia Um, she also has one boy and a few girls and pretty close to my cousin San too well we've like drifted apart because of a lot of family a lot of stuff has happened in my family oh actually I didn't mention as well that Susie got ran over by like those huge vans that have like the four wheels in the back they like back in the day like there's been a lot a lot a lot that's why we traumatized. Whole family traumatized. Like, we need therapy. So this is my therapy. I'm going to use this as a therapy. I don't know why I make, like, <laughs> I, 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 like all these random voices. I don't know. I just do it. So I am stayed down here and started working, like, worked for a, a year. Just basically did that work. Met new girls, you know, did my thing. The ladies are, are like, a constant, like, <laughs> they'll be in some of the stories, in a lot of the stories, like, a lot of my stories, especially from my past, revolve around women because that was kind of, like, <laughs> I was around that a lot, so. But we'll get, we'll get more into that in the other episodes. Back to my life. Letting you know what's up. I was just working here. And um, I was working at U-Haul as a, you know, like renting out trucks and um, all that good stuff. And I went to a party. My sister invited me to a party, to a Halloween party. And, like, I wasn't really a party person. I've never been into parties because for whatever reason, like, people was always like, did I either want to bully me or have issues with me for my most of my life? Like, I have... <laughs> I have this analogy like I could go to I used to I would go to a party back then and I could stand in a corner and face the wall and somebody will want to have an issue with that with me. So I I would just like avoid parties like it's not my thing. Um, I actually had crashed my car at the time. So it wasn't it was working. I was fixing it, but it wasn't like 100 percent. And I would go everywhere with my car like I would rarely not drive like I've always had a thing about kind of not not that I don't trust other drivers but it's just like I feel safest with me driving but my car was just was just like not in the best shape so I ended up leaving it and my sister's boyfriend picked me up he had like a 95 96 Impala it's like those round ones that um were pretty popular or kind of still are popular anyways we go to this party and we're just chilling having a blast it was like it was like cool because it was like chill. We were just no issue. Nobody was hating nothing. Um, and it was cool. And uh, we ended up going. To, well, we tried to go kind of like on a last minute beer run before 2 a.m. But this was 2007. So we didn't have like GPS. So and we were in Northridge. So we didn't know the area. So we ended up not finding a liquor store. And then I, I remembered my dad has some liquor bottles in the house. Let's just go, like, low-key, go to my apartment and just chill there, like, finish the night there. So we were like, let's go back to the party. 
we it, like a few a few guys had gone to the beer run we left everybody else there including my my older sister and my sister Susie so we go back to the party to find them we all we get them when we got back to the party we um my sister's boyfriend had parked kind of like on the opposite side of the lane so his car was facing the wrong way and then we all packed into the car and then the other people that we were with packed into their cars including my other sister and then um they had kind of blocked us in i think it was like a black escalade and there was like we were blocked in and we kind of waited for a little bit and we were just chilling and then like eventually he burned rubber with his car and then like this guy came out of the car uh, out of the escalator i believe i think it was the escalator i'm not 100 percent sure but he came out they the, they started fighting uh my sister's boyfriend and that guy started fighting and then i was like oh here we go here we go so they started fighting and then i eventually like there was something wrong with his car where i couldn't get out i was like let me out now, i kind of wanted to get out because I, I i it did make me angry that this fucking guy you know killing the vibe or whatever and but at the same time i was like damn my sister like i need to get this fool you know like Damn, living in L.A., fights. And then eventually I was able to get out. And as I was stepping out, somebody pistol with me. Bam, son. One to the face. Um, it hit, like, hit me. I think they they hit me like two or three, ton, two or three times. And I don't remember exactly getting hit. It, I guess it kind of like blacked me out a little bit. So they hit me. Mm, mm, mm. And I guess it was a few people whooping my ass like. Mm, mm, mm. I. That's my whooping ass. That's my whooping ass noise. So I, they were fucking me up like, bam. Um, and then like, I guess the other people that we were with kind of realized that, oh shit, some shit's going down. We better, you know, see what's up. And then so they got the the people off of me, and then I stood up, and then my head felt really cold, and I touched my head, and blood everywhere. Like my hand was just full of blood, and I was like. Rrr! I got. I think that's as mad as I've ever been in my whole entire life. So I saw red, literally, and like I was like, "All right, somebody gonna get it now." So the first guy that wasn't with us, I just bam, I hit him, and I hit him. We were in the street, and I hit him, and he fell on the sidewalk, and I fell like mounted on this guy, and then like I dropped him, and I was just bombing on him like bam, bam, bam. Bang, just like going ham. I had drank a few, and I'm I, I'm not a heavy drinker, so I was wilding. Um, so I was just fucking this guy up, and then I don't remember exactly what if it was my like my sister started came over and she like stopped me, and I think she was saying like stop stop he has a gun, or stop stop he's gonna you're gonna kill him or he's gonna kill you, one of those things. It's like things were happening so fast. I never saw a gun. So I'm like, damn. So I, I leave this guy there. I'm like, shit. So I get up and I touch my face again. And I'm like, damn. I was like still bleeding. So I went to go find her boyfriend. So I go to find him. It took me a little bit. So I go to find him. Come back. And so I guess this guy that I had laid out, he had a gun. And I just hit him so fast and just like fucked him up so fast that he didn't ha have time to react or it wasn't loaded. So in the time that it took me to get, find the guy, my sister's boyfriend, and, and, you know, go back to the car so we could leave, he had loaded the gun, and then he just, like, well, first he, like, he, I think he jumped in the escalator, or the SUV, and first he, they tried to run us over. Like, we had to get out of the way of the street, and then he just came out, and then I never saw it. Like, it was, his back was to me. He just shot me. Bam! He shot me one time. Bullet came in through my back, hit my spinal cord. Went through my lung and kind of like, I guess, circled my heart. It's somewhere. I still have a piece somewhere between my armpit and something. Um, and it paralyzed me instantly. Uh, I dropped to the floor and I just couldn't move anymore. Her boyfriend, like, gets a gun, tackles a guy, like, tries to get the gun. And, and like, it, it gets blurry. Like, I was just like, damn, well, let's just hospital. Like, once I knew that I was shot, I was like hospital like we need to dip to the hospital you know everybody was like all right let's go so we ended up they ended up just like throwing me into the car 
And then we just like raced through the hospital, like taking red lights with like just going. We were in Northridge and we ended up closer to like um, more into Van Nuys um, at Valley Presbyterian Hospital. So they get me to the hospital. And um, yeah, the bullet paralyzed me instantly. So now a Mexican has a, I have a T3, T4 complete spinal cord injury. And what that means is that I can't move from about the chest down. Um, Can't move or feel from the chest down. So like literally can't move or feel. And it's crazy because when you, you, I can't use the muscles like around my stomach diaphragm area. So my balance is messed up, can't breathe right. So I got to be careful with the Rona. So it paralyzed me instantly. And i um, been trying to build life ever since that moment. And, um, you know, it's been a struggle. I, like, there's, I, I've had to learn a lot of hard lessons and, you know, had to grow a lot as a person. And I'm still not there. I'm still definitely struggling i deal with depression and it's almost like a daily battle and you know it's hard i'm not gonna say it's not like i lose most days and this is where the podcast comes in because i feel like i need to if i don't really get my shit together i'm gonna lose myself i'm just gonna you know like i'm i'm gonna lose and i know it so like I need to get my shit together like financially emotionally in in every aspect of my life I need to improve and um you know this is where the the this is where the journey starts um I rambled and we're going to get more into my life like I said I don't have like a a set uh format or like we're we're going to just build it as we go. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. So I just went out to get the equipment and here we are. So I'm going to have guests. I actually I'm not going to lie. I've tried to record this first episode like five or six times already with no success, whether it be from video errors and wanting to have everything just right and fumbling all my words and mixing stuff up and overthinking everything. Um, but here we are. We're doing it. We're doing it. So I'm gonna bring in. I know a lot of artists and I, and you know models and creative people. So I want to bring them in, pick their brains. You know, maybe tell some jokes and you know have a good time and uh, you know be around people because that's one of the things that I need. I need to socialize a lot more. I've been really isolating myself. Well, with Corona. I I don't want to risk it. So I've been home this whole year. I didn't really do any photography. It, it was I shut it down completely and was like dealing with um actually like deaths in the family and my dog passed away, you know, 2020. So it, it's it's been a rough year. We so we got to start it off right and continue this journey and um you know Try to stay on the grind and build something, you know, try to bring more awareness when it comes to my paintings and my photography. I've been failing as a marketer, like the worst. I'm not selling because I'm not marketing at all. It's almost like I'm I'm scared to succeed. Like I like I I second guess myself all the time. I question my paintings constantly. It's like a, a struggle that I have almost daily it's like am i really an artist um and i think that stems a lot uh, because of a lot of the work that i do and we're gonna get more into that and i want to show you guys my process um that's the other thing i um it's called the paralyzed artist podcast because obviously i'm paralyzed and i create art and we're gonna bring some art to you guys um you know teach you guys some of the stuff that i'm learning i'm learning as i go I'm not a a great artist by any means. I'm still new to it and still experimenting and trying out new things. So you guys get to see that journey and follow that journey and maybe we could build something. 
you know, I want to bring in uh, family members as well, kind of like maybe see how I've changed as a person, like when it comes to living with a spinal cord injury, um, you know, as far as how much I've, I've changed as a person and what it does to your family and to your friends and that whole situation. We're going to talk about all those things and get those emotions out, get all those, you know, stuff that is important to talk about that I haven't talked about and that I feel it is holding me back um, as far as succeeding. So we're, you know, hopefully as safe as I can bring you these interviews and this randomness. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and, um, you know, we could grow something. So that's basically what it's going to be about. That's what the podcast kind of the heart of it is going to be, you know, the art and, you know, growing as a person and um, becoming a better artist, a better creator, a better person overall, hopefully. And, you know, maybe give a few of the lessons that I've learned, uh, some of the failures um, that I've had and um, that I'll have because, like I said, I'm a new artist and I'm still learning all the time or trying to learn dealing with uh, depression and, and anxiety and undealt with traumas, man. So, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, will enjoy the randomness that we have to bring. So how I got into paintings. So now I'll, I'll, before before I go, I'll tell you guys a little bit of how I got into art, like, I kind of, as a kid, I like I wasn't really into art, but I could kind of do it. Like right before I moved away with my dad, I would like I had a, a, a neighbor that I would draw with all the time. Like we would, well, not all the time, but we would sketch here and there. And I kind of got into drawing. And then in school, I I won a few like art contests. So I wasn't really like super into art, but I could do it. Um, and then I kind of stopped doing it because I discovered sports. I discovered like basketball, football, and I was really good at those. So I kind of like gave art a break until I moved up to the state of Washington. And um, for whatever reason, I got like a like a, a creative itch when it came to painting. I don't know what triggered it. I got into like learning about like Picasso and, um, you know, a lot of like the, the big major artists, you know, the, the big guns, the masters. And I started wanting to paint and learn about painting. And it's kind of funny. I didn't. I had no knowledge of painting whatsoever. And I went out to get like oil paintings and try to just like go straight from the the tubes to the canvas. And then like a week, two weeks later, I was like, "Why isn't this drying?" And then like I was like, "What?" The? And then I learned about like you're having to use mixed me- like mediums to you know mix in with the oils to you know speed up the dry time and all that no idea so i then i learned about acrylics and i did a few random paintings i don't know what happened to them but i kind of just like then i started getting into tattooing and i left the drawing behind um i mean the paintings um and then that's when i moved back and then once i had my injury and kind of like felt like i needed to find an avenue to to create i got into painting again and Got into Banksy and like graffiti art and just like a lot of like the the artists that started doing it, like a lot of like street art and like street expressing street art expression, you know, like the graffiti and like all that stencils and like the people that do like Shepherd Ferry that do like the stencils. And there's a few others teach preacher teacher. I see you. And then I started looking like online for like how to make stencils and all that. And I kind of like got a little technique down that I'll be making videos of. To, so, you know, maybe teach you guys so that I could teach, you know, how I create a lot of the paintings that I create. And maybe, you know, some of the people that might see an episode might start painting and, you know, get into stencils. My style, I think, is evolving and um, because I have a lot of ideas in my head that I've had for a while that I think I should probably paint. 
um so my i feel like my art might transition so you know stick around and see where the journey takes us um where the podcasting journey takes us so don't forget don't forget to subscribe um leave some comments let me know what you guys want to know if you have questions when it comes to spinal cord injuries or art questions shoot the questions or some like um topics you might want me to talk about let me know in the comments uh leave a review for the audio for the people just listening on the audio section damn hopefully my voice isn't annoying or anything like i know i could do buses i could i could bring you some buses you want some thana montana huh i'm thana montana one say good night to the bad guy that's a bad guy coming through Okay, that's a bad Tony Montana. Mm-hmm. Dry is my voice. Mm-hmm. My voice is dry is my throat. Mm-hmm. These holes I must get. Imagine if, if Yoda was a pimp. Mm-hmm. These cheeks I must chase. Cheek chaser. Anyways. I need, I, I'm trying to give a, a lot more serious about painting. I've started getting a little bit more into like some nude stencils and getting into a few other celebrity stencils. We're going to dig in and um, try to get it done. Shout out my boy, the third child for the intro music. Um, go ahead and follow him on his SoundCloud. Um, he has a, a IG page. Go follow your boy in the intro and outro of this these podcasts. Let me know if you guys like the intro outros. If we need to change them, it's all new. I, I like I'm not uh, like super super tech savvy. Like I know the basics. I'm still learning Premiere Pro. Like that's one of the reasons that I've kind of been lagging it because, well, I'm 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 also using a, a mid 2012 macbook pro to try to edit these videos so it like lags and then i get frustrated and um yeah but we're we're gonna do it we're gonna do it hopefully um um the the two episodes coming up that i i recorded two episodes with two friends of mine one is mr richard bell he's a amazing uh painter he also had he's a quadriplegic he broke his neck in a car accident and we'll get more into his story in the very next episode and then i talked to uh, a friend of mine yada she's like a part-time model and she does like these candy apples that are amazing that are fire extra good and she mixes it up and she does her own thing so hopefully you guys uh enjoy those two episodes they're like cut up because i'm not that good at talking and i don't know i don't know if i'm just gonna leave the whole episodes on some of these or chop them up we'll see i'm still learning let me know what you guys if you guys have questions or you know want to know anything specific so yeah more topics coming soon um with the guests i'll mix it up um but in reality i kind of like want to learn how they got to where they're at and you know where they're planning on going and kind of like learn those little details that you won't hear otherwise you speak to those people and maybe they'll teach me something maybe i'll teach them something i'm always into learning and reading i've been reading a lot more recently trying to improve myself as a person um that is the goal um there's a lot of things that i need to change in my life and I'm starting here. 2021 is going to be my year. Because, man, I let 2020 go by and just did the minimum. And I'm ashamed. Hopefully you guys enjoy this randomness. I didn't blabber too much. And I didn't, you know, say some craziness. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. I want to improve and get better obviously i'll get better as i go as far as talking on camera and getting better at even recording because i always forget to record everything 
I'm, I'm super bad at remembering. Like, I live the moment and I don't record it. So I need to get better at showing you guys that because I do have uh, another page. This this is it is going to be its own channel. I do have my original channel, D Alvarez TV, and I'm going to try to get more active on that channel as well. Bring you guys some random dumb videos. Maybe it'll make you laugh, make you learn some. Um, but I am going to get more into how I create the paintings, the whole process from start to finish, from like taking the image that I'm going to use to putting it in Photoshop to you know projecting it and drawing the basic outline on canvas and then starting the painting process i'm going to be talking about all of that um in the podcast and then in that channel so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy the upcoming episodes lego it's 2 a.m and i'm hungry should i eat something today I got into I I actually started doing these interesting um, nude paintings that I'm interested in seeing how they turn out. Hopefully they are cool. Second guessing that for a number of reasons. We'll get we'll get more into that. I actually spoke to an artist that does stencils kind of similar to what I do. And I had a conversation with her about my art and like if it's if, legit not if it's legitimate art it's art you know it's like on a canvas and it's a piece of art and i'm going to start adding a lot more i've left a lot of them blank and i'm going to start adding and creating more adding more you know a lot more of my flavor to them so you guys get to see that process thank you guys for you know sticking around if you did all the way i'll try to keep these at about an hour maybe we'll see how it goes hopefully We'll start, you know, some adventures if they open stuff up in 2021. If not, it's just going to be about making these paintings and making these podcasts and talking to these people. So have an amazing year. Hope you guys have nothing but, you know, positive things happen in your life. Sending good vibes to everybody. Um, and yeah, just try to be a good person, man. Smile. Say hi to somebody. I'm I'm the worst at that, and I need to get a lot better at, you know, being open and seeing people people through their you know seeing people's perspective. So subscribe, shoot a comment, let me know. What is up? Pacing in my studio, just coming up with dapper bars to spit in crucial situations when I play the rapper's part. Heard I got a denim heart and lyricism in my jeans. Cut a track down, leave it bald head like Mr. Clean. Spit it mean, a record fiend. I school you niggas, call me Dean. I'm always speechless, never seen. Stay on the chase for minty green. It's local how these niggas say they ballin', but they broke though. 